Okay, so environmental value systems. Um, so there's a lot of influences that go into what value systems people have. Um, many of these often tend to be historical events, um, and then that will influence the way you th uh, think. Um, and then, of course, the three major um, environmental value systems are ecocentric or earth centered, anthropocentric or people centered, and then technocentric, technology centered. Um, and that affects the way that they view the world, but also the way that they would like to find solutions. Um, so some historical influences, there's a wide range of these. Um, you should have each picked your own at the beginning of the year to kind of do a little bit of research on, um, but this is uh, a non-complete list of, of events um, that impacted the environmental movement from the founding of the National Park and, and things like John Muir and the Sierra Club, which still exists today, to extinction events like the passenger pigeon, many other ones like the dodo. Um, yeah, I'll, you can pause this as you'd like to just kind of see more details about these. But in general, um, on the IB exam, they might ask you to describe a few different historical influences on the environmental movement. So you might say that, say, Silent Spring really brought up people's awareness to the effect of DDT on the environment um, and the way DDT will biomagnify as it moves up the food chain and then affect um, predatory birds, especially like bald eagles, peregrine falcons. Um, perhaps you've heard of Desert Solitaire, the influence or the inspiration for our field trip, one of them. Um, yeah, so lots of different historical events here. Um, and of course, I'll provide the link to this in the website so you can scroll through at your own uh, desire. Uh, the Montreal Protocol we get to talk about in a lot more depth next year as we talk about the atmosphere. Of course, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill is a much more recent event, which brought people's awareness to um, offshore drilling, especially. Um, so this is actually a really cool um, interactive part here. So if you click the actual link to the slideshow, you can um, take these hyperlinks to find out more information um, about these environmental disasters, like the Exxon Valdez oil spill. Uh, this is up in Alaska, and fun fact, the captain of the ship was actually the brother of my orchestra teacher in high school. Um, and so my orchestra teacher was the first teacher that I actually called by his first name. Um, story was because he was embarrassed by his last name because of the connection with that giant oil spill. Um, and again, you can click on these to find more information. Um, so again, the three main um, viewpoints are ecocentric, anthropocentric, and technocentric. And these are just examples of how they might approach a different situation. You can see that they all want to protect the environment um, and care for it, but they just have kind of a different focus, right? Are we focusing on just the earth itself and how can we help it um, for its own worth? Or are we going to you know, focus on the human aspect or how can we use technology to solve these problems? Um, but an ultimate goal, of course, is to better the environment. Um, and you can imagine this as a system with different inputs, right? Those are the influences um, into how you view the world. Um, and that could be, of course, your education, the experiences, um, culture and media. Um, and then that will affect the actions, decisions and evaluations that you make in your everyday life. Um, so this is kind of a spectrum idea, right? So we can go from really extreme on either end to sort of um, people that exist in the middle. Um, so just kind of some nice visualizations of the three types. Here's the ecocentric, right? Uh, viewing that humans are part of the natural world, sort of um, not necessarily above it in any way. Um, anthropocentric, you know, viewing that we should meet the needs of people first, um, and that really, if we have a healthy environment that can create healthy communities, um, and vice versa, right? You could invest in community-based agriculture to help green your city, but also provide food for homeless people um, or plant you know, fruit trees on the street instead of other trees. Um, so it can actually provide food as well as shade and other uses. Um, and then of course, technocentric is the really the view that we can solve anything with um, development and technology. Um, you know, this is the real drive behind um, getting to Mars is so that if we do end up with a planet that we can inhabit, then we'll actually be expanding into new worlds. Um, very extreme technocentric view. Um, so that's a bit like a cornucopian, right? You know, we don't really have to worry about the Earth so much because we can eventually figure out how to inhabit any world. Um, 
versus the deep ecologists, which some of them are almost extreme to the point that they'd say we should abandon technology and return to, you know, living hunter gatherer lifestyles. Um, and then those different EVSs will have different intrinsic value or will view it differently, basically. Um, again, that's kind of like the worth of, of um, species or organisms or individuals, the right that they have to exist, um, or like what their actual value is, maybe outside of money. Um, and then here's examples of IB style questions. Discuss the view that the environment can have its own intrinsic value. Evaluate the implications of two contrasting EVSs in the context of environmental issue. Um, I've actually seen uh, an exam or like an essay style question, um, pretty much this exact wording, except they said the environmental issue was say air pollution, which you guys would not have because we haven't covered that yet. Okay, um, and again, you can find the link to this slideshow um, in the um, information section below. So if you'd like more information, um, you can click that link.